please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2019 physics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 4. A non-adiabatic cylinder with cross-sectional area A is placed at normal air pressure and is filled with an ideal gas as shown in figure 4A. The cylinder is closed by an adiabatic piston with mass M. The pressure of the air is P and the temperature of the air is T. In equilibrium, the height of the piston is H from the bottom and the temperature of the gas is T. An object of mass M is placed on the piston and the height of the piston becomes H sub 1 in equilibrium as shown in figure 4b. The acceleration of gravity is denoted as g. For question 1, we are asked to find the expression of h1. For question 2, we are asked to find the work done on the gas by the air when the height of the piston changes from h to h sub 1. Let us review some concepts relevant to this problem. First is the ideal gas law, which states that PV equals nRT, where P is the pressure, V the volume, N the number of moles, and T the temperature of the ideal gas. Here R is the universal gas constant. We also recall that pressure is defined as the force per unit area that is the force exerted on a surface per unit area of that surface. We also recall that work is the change in energy, that means the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy. To find the expression of H sub 1, we will need to use two equations. First is Boyle's law, which is just the ideal gas law when the temperature is constant. The other equation is from Newton's laws. Boyle's law states that at constant temperature, the product of P and V is constant, and that is easily seen from the ideal gas law. N is constant, R is constant, and if temperature is constant, then the product P and V is constant. So Boyle's law allow us allows us to compare the product of P and V in two different states. In our problem, we will compare the state at A, that is before we add the mass M, and the state here at B, right after we reach equilibrium after adding the mass M. So, if the pressure of the gas in state A is called P sub A, and the volume of the gas here is called V sub A, and the pressure of the gas here is called P sub B, and the volume of the gas here is called V sub B, then the expression from Boyle's law is this. Here, the pressure P sub A is unknown. It is not equal to the pressure of the air outside P because there is a mass on the piston and therefore there is a little bit more pressure on the gas inside and so let's retain P sub A. In the same way the pressure inside the gas here in state B is also unknown because there is this mass capital M and therefore this pressure is different from P sub A and from the pressure of the gas outside which is just P. And so let us retain it as P sub B. On this side, the volume is the area of this piston, the cross-sectional area of the cylinder, times the height H. And so we replace V sub A with A times H. On this side, that volume is the area of the cross-section of the cylinder, which is again A, times the height, which is h sub 1. 
and so we are left with this expression. We can rearrange this expression by cancelling the a's and moving p sub b down here, and we get an expression for h sub 1. However, this is not in the choices, and so let us find the ratio p sub a over p sub b. We now use Newton's laws. Because we are at equilibrium, we know that the total forces is zero, that is the sum of the forces is zero. There are three forces acting on the piston. That is the force of the air, which we denote F of air. There is also the force due to the mass M and the mass of the piston itself. And that is the weight of the piston plus the weight of the object. And there is also that force exerted by the gas. And we call that the force exerted by the gas as F sub gas. Now, this is the equation that must be satisfied at equilibrium. The force exerted by the gas is the pressure of the gas times the area. At state A, the mass M was not yet added, and so this is our equation. From the gas, the force is P sub A, which is the pressure in state A, times the area of the cross section of the cylinder. Here the force of the air is just the pressure of the air, which is P, times the area of the cross section of the cylinder. And the weight of the piston is simply M times G. At state B, after the mass M has been added, the pressure exerted by the gas is already P sub B, and so the area times the pressure produces the force. The area is still A, and the pressure of the air is still P, and so this remains the force exerted by the air outside. The weight of the piston is still mg, and now we added the weight of the object, which is now capital M times g. We can now rearrange this to get the ratio of A, or rather P sub A, to P sub B. We divide this side by this side, and we get this ratio. We divide this side by this side to get this ratio. And now we can replace this ratio here with the expression that we obtained here. And now we get the expression for H sub 1. This is the expression for H sub 1. To find the work done on the gas when moving from height H to height H plus 1, or rather H sub 1, we need to recall what work means. It is the change in potential energies and kinetic energies. Because we are at equilibrium in both states, the change in kinetic energy is zero because nothing is moving. The pistons are not moving. So now we are left with this expression. We are looking for the change in potential energy. On this side, the potential energy is given by the mass of the object and the piston together times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. On this side, the potential energy is given by the mass of the piston times the acceleration due to gravity and the height of that piston. We do some algebra on this expression. First, we replace h sub 1 with the expression that we obtained in problem 4 1. That is this expression. We do some algebra to manipulate this expression, first moving the g and the h out, and then combining the terms here, 
doing the subtraction. And finally, we will obtain this expression. For question 3, we then cover the system with adiabatic walls and remove the object with mass m. In equilibrium, the height of the piston becomes h sub 2. We need to find the temperature of the gas. Because we added an adiabatic wall, the temperature of the gas inside does not have to be equal to the temperature of the air outside. This is different from the previous two questions, where the wall was absent and the temperature inside the gas is the same as the temperature outside. For this problem, we use the ideal gas law. Here, the number of moles of the gas is constant, and the universal gas constant is of course constant. But the pressure, the volume, and the temperature may be changing. And so, we move the temperature here in the denominator to obtain this expression. Here, on the left, is the expression for the state A, that is, without the adiabatic walls and without the mass M. Here is at the state after the adiabatic walls were added, and again, there is no mass M. Now, we replace pressure with P sub A in here, but in here, we replace it with P sub A as well. The pressure of the gas in this state is the same as the pressure of the gas in this state, because the mass on top of it are the same. The masses are the same. Then here we replace the temperature T sub A with the temperature of the gas. In this case, the temperature of the gas here is the same as the temperature of the air outside because there is no adiabatic walls. On this side, the temperature could be different. We called it T sub C. The effect of the adiabatic walls is that the temperature in the gas does not have to be equal to the temperature of the air outside. And so, if we rearrange this equation that we obtained, we see that the P sub A's cancel and the A's cancel. We obtain this expression, which gives us the temperature of the gas. For the last question, we remove the adiabatic walls. In equilibrium, the height of the piston becomes h sub 3. Now we need to find the expression for h sub 3. Here we drew the new state. Let's call it state D. In this case, the adiabatic walls were removed, and so the temperature inside the gas becomes the same as the temperature of the open air. And if we notice, the state A is actually the same as state D. The mass on top of the piston is the same. The temperatures are the same. And therefore, it is reasonable to expect that the H here is the same as here. And in fact, if we apply the ideal gas law, we get this expression. We replace the pressures. We replace the areas. And now the height here is H. The height here is H sub 3. And again, the temperatures are equal. And so, finally, we obtain this equality. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!